Hey, on our last lesson, we learned about the trigonometric ratios and talked about sine, cosine, and tangent function, and today we're going to talk about how we can use those things. First thing you need to be able to do is calculate the sine of an angle measurement, the cosine of an angle measurement, the tangent of an angle measurement using the calculator. So if you notice here, I have a snapshot of your TI calculator. And you can see we have a sine, cosine, and tangent function buttons. And all you need to do in order to calculate the sine of 30 is to go down, press that button, sine, type in the number 30, close the parentheses. So it looks like that. And you can see that the sine of 30 is 0.5. So that means the fraction that represents the sine of an angle that's 30 degrees is one half. <clears throat> so our opposite over hypotenuse is one half. Same, similarly, we can do the same thing with cosine. We can uh, go ahead and plug cosine of 30. And we get this crazy decimal that probably keeps going on. And that represents the ratio of the adjacent length to the hypotenuse length. And lastly, we can find the tangent of 30. And we get another crazy decimal there. And that represents the fraction or the ratio of the opposite side length over the adjacent side length when we're talking about an angle of 30 degrees. So real easy calculating sine, cosine, and tangent of some angle in your calculator. I think these functions are also available on Android phones and I apologize for that. Android phones and iPhones. So I think if you turn your phone sideways you can find the sine, cosine, and tangent functions that are available for you. So go ahead if you can, go ahead if you have a uh, regular calculator, it has sine, cosine, and tangent. If you have a smartphone or if for some reason you have a TI calculator, calculate the sine of 45, cosine of 45, and tangent of 45. So we plug in just like we did with the angle of 30, you just hit sine, plug in 45, and you get 0.7071067812 and we can do the same things for cosine and tangent and notice uh, tangent is nice and neat the tangent of 45 is 1 and that should make sense since if I have a 45 degree angle in a right triangle we're talking about an isosceles right triangle and the two legs should have the same length so their ratio opposite over adjacent will be the same. So now that you know how to calculate the cosine, tangent, or sine of an angle, we can use that information plus we can use our ratios to find a missing side length. So when we have a special right triangle, a 45, 45, 90, or a 30, 60, 90, you can use the methods we did in 7.2 to find a missing side. You could also use trigonometry. And in this case, we have a triangle that has a 36 degree angle. And this is not one of our special right triangle angles. So now let's use some trigonometry to figure out what the value of x is. So I'm going to start by labeling my sides of the triangle. I'm referencing this angle. So if I go across here to where I have 10, that's going to be my opposite side. And this side that's labeled X is across from the right angle. This is my hypotenuse. So the trig ratio or the trig function that has to deal with opposite side and hypotenuse is sine. 
So we are going to use the sine function to find out the value of x. So sine of 36, sine of the angle, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that means sine of 36 is equal to 10 over x. And we're going to try and solve for x here. So we need to get x out of the denominator of this fraction, so we multiply both sides by x. And we end up with x times this whole thing. Sine of 36 represents one value, even though it looks kind of new, kind of funky. It represents one number. So this is x times this whole sine 36 equals 10. Then we're going to divide both sides by the sine of 36. And then finally, we can put this all into our calculator. We've got to make sure that we're careful about it, though. And we get that x is 17. Now, just a note about plugging into your calculator. Like I said, you have to be careful. If, if I want to make sure I get the right answer, I do 10 divided by sine 36. Make sure you close up parentheses. And you should get an easy x equals 17. So we can use the same thinking for this right triangle. This time we have an angle of 35. And my opposite side is over here. And it's not labeled, so we're not really too concerned with it. 20 represents my hypotenuse. And this other side here that's labeled x is my adjacent side. So I have some information about my adjacent side. It's x. My hypotenuse is 20. So that means I'm going to steer in the direction of using cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my cosine of 35 is equal to that ratio, x over 20, adjacent, adjacent side over the hypotenuse length. I multiplied both sides by 20 this time. So I actually have one less step because now I've got x alone and I can just do 20 times the cosine of 35. You get that, that uh, adjacent side length at x is approximately 16.4. So go ahead and use that information here to try and find x in this right triangle. I highly recommend labeling your sides opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And choose the function that uses the two sides you have labeled. So you want to choose the two sides that are x and 7.